All right, this video is about the Kensington Expert wireless mouse, which you probably know is a trackball. Uh, if you've found this video, you're probably looking for uh, videos about trackballs, or you're probably looking for videos, uh, looking for information on this model. And the reason I'm making this video is because when I was interested in getting this model, I couldn't find a lot of good information out about uh, the Kensington Expert mouse on YouTube. Um, a lot of it was just review based, it wasn't really telling me the kind of things I needed to know. Um, so here we go. Uh, it's not a review, um, I just wanted to talk about the way I've been using it in a day to day workplace setting. I'm using it in a Mac environment, as you'll notice, um, and I just want to talk about how I got it connected and about the trackball work software. So this is the wireless model, there is a wired model. Uh, this wireless model uh, is advertised as, having, as uh, having Bluetooth, but I cannot get it to work on OSX uh, Sierra or OSX El Capitan. I have seen um, some reviews or uh, some forums online where people say that they have got it working, but it's, the uh, performance has been spotty at best. So if you want a purely Bluetooth uh, trackball wireless, I don't recommend this. I don't think you're going to get it to work with Mac. I'm not 100% certain about PC though, so your experience may vary with that. Um, the, uh, the way I've got it connected is via the uh, wireless receiver which is actually uh, a little uh, wireless USB receiver that I've got plugged into the back of this keyboard so it's low powered USB um, you can plug it into the back of the Mac or into the side of a keyboard or what have you. Uh, so this runs off one AA battery. I've been using it uh, every day since mid-March 2017. It's now the end of June 2017. So a few months I've been switching it on in the morning, off in the day, in the night, and uh, it hasn't skipped a beat. So I'm probably going to get uh, quite a long time out of one AA battery, which is great. Uh, the next thing to say is that Switching it on and off is also done on the back of this. Uh, there's a little switch for on and off, there's a little switch for switching it between Bluetooth and wireless receiver as well. So the way this thing looks, I don't know, I mean I guess uh, it's all subjective. If you like this kind of tech then maybe you do like how it looks. Um, I guess objectively you would say it's probably not the prettiest looking thing, but I guess next to this keyboard, you know, it's, it's okay. Uh, in a workplace setting, I'm not too fussed about how it looks. Uh, it's pretty, it's pretty big. Um, it's about you know 10 to 12 centimeters wide. It's about maybe 25 centimeters deep with the wrist rest attachment. So it takes up a fair bit of uh, desk real estate. Uh, the other thing to note is that uh, without the wrist rest, it's on quite a slant. There's quite an angle. So if you're interested in uh, keeping your wrist straight, like I am, I use the wrist rest. But if you didn't have the wrist rest, you can imagine how bent up my hand would be to use this. So uh, the reason I looked into ergonomic keyboards, ergonomic uh, sort of peripherals is because I've got uh, terrible arthritis in this wrist. But you know, if you're more interested in just maybe um, looking after your, your well-being and health for a long term, then it's a good option to get a trackball with and using the wrist rest, keeping your wrist as in, in as much of a neutral uh, position as you can. Um, the ball on this thing, it does come in and out, uh, which is like pretty easily. Um, so you can clean the inside fairly simply. Um, the uh, I haven't noticed a need to clean it. That's just me though. I, I don't uh, eat oily foods and then start using it without washing my hands or anything like that. Um, I just haven't had an issue with that. The tracking is fine. I've never noticed any any issue, um, and that's been a few months of, of solid use. Um, so maybe I'll have to clean it in a few months. I don't know. Uh, the scroll wheel on this thing is probably one of the biggest bugbears that you read about online. Um, it's it's got quite a scratchy feel, um, which you may or may not like, and it has quite a not a good sound if you're in a quiet office. So I'll just give you a listen to this. And if you want to flick up and down pages, you can hear how loud that could be in a quiet office. But you can also do it quite softly. And it doesn't make quite as much noise. So 
I don't mind the tactility of it. I don't mind the scratchiness. Uh, it's something you do get used to, but it's not the smoothest um, sort of scroll out there, especially if you're coming straight from a, a Mac trackpad or something like that, where the this, this scrolling is quite smooth and doesn't make a sound, obviously. Um, <clears throat> the buttons on this thing, there's, there's four large buttons. One, two, three, four. Um, you can also enable a fifth and sixth functionality in the buttons by simultaneously clicking the bottom two and the top two together so you actually have six programmable button functions in the trackball works software which I'll go into shortly. Um, the buttons are quite large, they're easy to press. Uh, I'm noticing some slight shine um, that's starting to appear on the left click that I use with my thumb down here. Um, but I did get this model um, from someone else, so I'm not sure whether this is uh, how much they used it before I got it. Uh, the the trackball work software is what I'll talk about next, so I can explain how you can map the buttons to any functionality. So, just quickly, uh, if you uh, you download the trackball work software from the Kensington website. Uh, and you can get it on this page, which is on products, uh, control, trackballs, trackball works, customization software. And if you scroll down the page, and there's a download here for Mac, download here for PC. Uh, this is another section of the website you can get the download from, uh, which is support, technical product support, software and drivers. There's a list of the drivers here, um, and this one here, trackball works 1.3 for Mac. So if you download that and install it, uh, you will have this preference pane in your system preferences, trackball works, right here. So I'll click on that. So you can set different functions for each of the four buttons and the fifth and sixth buttons uh, per application by, you can add the app here. and wait for the uh, beach ball to finish spinning you can add you can add any app you want oh my god it's seriously taking this long so yeah you can add your uh, you can add whatever application you want um, by selecting it and choosing it and then setting different preferences for the four buttons for that app specifically. Okay. Wow. Okay, so there you go. There's a whole bunch of apps here that you could uh, choose from to, to change uh, the button mapping for. So you can choose, you can have app specific functions. Um, I've set up Chrome and and there's a general all application setting, so I'll just run through that. that. That basically runs if it's on an app that you haven't set up, the all applications takes over. Uh, so I've got bottom left set as the left click, bottom right set as right click, and upper left set as like a drag lock. So you can click the top left and you've got a drag lock there. Um, also, I've got double click set as the top right. So I've got double click uh, like to collapse windows. So if I click that, the window collapses. Um, I've also got some some other specific uh, shortcuts. You can set any shortcut you like to uh, any of these buttons. Really, um, I won't explain what those are because they're specific to how I use my Mac, but I'll run through the other tabs here. So uh, you can set uh, pointer preferences, so the, po the cursor speed, uh, the acceleration. Uh, I've got it set at a, at a sort of a, a, a feel that's natural to how I use the, uh, use the trackball. So I can spin it around and uh, I use hot corners so I can go top, uh, top left there and get all the uh, application windows. Bottom left, I get desktop, etc., etc. So um, I can spin the ball pretty easily and get to the to the corners of, of my monitor. Uh, you can have a slow pointer. So if you hold down a modifier, 
So this one's already selected to the command key. If you hold down command and move the cursor, you can see how it's going quite slow. So you get some uh, precise movement on the cursor. And if you let go, you're back to normal. I'll turn that off because I don't really find that useful uh, as I'm using shortcuts a lot and um, it just slows down my cursor when I don't want it to. Uh, single axis movement, if you turn that on and hold a modifier, so you can set that to any of these modifiers. Um, so at the moment it's, it's on command. If I hold down command, it will only go left or right or up or down. So you can see that the cursor is only going up and down there when I hold that modifier down. So that's just about single axis movement. I'm not sure who that would be useful for, but I don't use it. Uh, scrolling, this is where you can set the scrolling speed of the scroll ring. So I'll just, uh, just to give you an example. I will bring up a window here. And so this is the scrolling speed of uh, going up and down, say, a window or whatever, uh, a browser window or, you know, find a window. Uh, inertial scrolling uh, is, you know, if you flick the scroll wheel, whoa, that's a bit heavy. If you flick the scroll wheel, it will keep spinning up depending on how hard you flick the scroll wheel. If you just touch it a little, it'll only go up a little bit. Um, I do like this in the Finder, but I don't like it in Chrome, and I'll explain that in a moment. So uh, you can set the scroll, uh, sort of if you like it, to go up clockwise or up counterclockwise. It's so I guess if you're a lefty or a righty, that might be more intuitive to switch to the other side. And help is, you know, just a bunch of technical stuff. Um, and now I'll show you Chrome, the settings I've got for Chrome. So this is where I guess it becomes quite a powerful peripheral. Um, the, I've got the buttons set to, um, basically I've got to scroll through the tabs of a browser window set to the top left and top right. So I'll just give you an example, top left goes backwards through the tabs and top right I go forward through the tab. So uh, in my job, I usually have a lot of tabs open and I can quickly flick through them by doing that. Um, <clears throat> I also have a reload last open tab is the top two buttons. So if I accidentally close the tab and I want to get it back open, I hit the top two. And I also have back as the bottom two, so I like to be able to go back um, pretty quickly, um, I, more than I go forward. So I don't have a forward function set up, although you could set the top two to go forward. You could set any of these to anything you want. I've still got left click and right click as normal uh, because I still find those useful in Chrome. Now, I'll just go back to the scrolling that I was talking about. I have the scrolling in Chrome I have inertia switched off and this is probably my biggest complaint about the Kensington Expert mouse is that the scroll wheel is really it's not a smooth transition as you scroll so you'd think maybe as I did that it would be nice and smooth with but you can see how jagged it is as it ju jumps up and down in little increments on the page so if I were to spin it with inertia it just keeps on going and then if I try to stop it and go back up and it's just going up and down and up and down so I'll switch it on and I'll show you it's quite annoying um, but you do get used to it but I just found this really like maybe this is not the right web page to show you but that's my reasoning I, I like to have it off for Chrome uh, and then I can just sort of slightly go down the page so if I were to switch it back on and try to just do small movements down the page you see how much it jumps And it keeps sort of going. I don't find that useful. Sometimes I just want to go down a little bit and it sort of keeps going up. So I have inertia switched off for Chrome. So I can just slightly go down a page. I found the scrolling pretty
terrible when I first got the Kensington Expert Mouse. I, I didn't like that it wasn't very smooth and it wasn't as precise as, as I was used to, but I have gotten used to it and it's really not an issue for me anymore. Um, the the way I, I just wanted to point out when I when I first got this, I wasn't sure which button would be set to uh, left click, and I wasn't sure how would you drag. You know, how would this go if I was didn't have a normal two button mouse? How would I be able to to drag things around? So, I did explain that I've got uh, a uh, a drag lock on um, when I'm not in Chrome. When I'm in other applications, I've got a drag lock set to the top left button which allows me to drag a window around without having to hold down a button. But it's quite simple to be able to hold, like as you would in, on a mouse, hold down with the left click and hold down with the left click and move a window around. So you can move, uh, you know, you can move files around, etc., etc., um, as you normally would with a mouse, you know. And you know, holding down and click dragging and selecting is 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 all nice and easy. There's no issue there. It's re you'll get used to it in about five minutes. I guess uh, that's about everything I wanted to point out. Um, if you're in two minds about getting one because you're used to a mouse and you you know you do graphics work or you do, you know, whatever it is, you're, you're sort of a power user and you're used to moving around the operating system quite, quite, you know, quickly and uh, smoothly, then I, I wouldn't uh, hesitate to recommend this. It might take a day or two just and, and to really, you know, figure out what, what button mappings work best for you with the way you work and, uh, and then you know trial and error get some practice in it might take you know a few weeks before you get the sort of muscle memory in your hands to be able to use this all day without fatigue coming from a mouse i had to switch back and forth between a mouse maybe once or twice a day just because my hand was getting a little tired because i wasn't used to using a trackball different muscles in your hand but now every day i'm fine i don't even have a mouse on my uh, desk anymore and it's all good so uh, that's pretty much all I wanted to say, um, thanks for watching and uh, take it easy.